Welcome to your point of contact for the Kingdom of God. I am Pastor Dumae Harshaw Jr. coming from First Baptist Church located 101 South Wilmington Street in the city of Raleigh, North Carolina. Our theme this year is God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power of love and of a sound mind and we are proceeding in that spirit uh, knowing that God's word is true, God's presence is powerful, and the Lord is uh, making a way. He has made a way, He is making a way, and don't you know, He shall make a way. And so we are moving through uh, the book of Revelation, and now we're at the first uh, letter to the seven churches, the church of Ephesus. And it is an exciting, a powerful word, as it was for the churches of Asia Minor, it is also for the churches of the 21st century. And we just pray that we'd have, op have open ears and that we would hear what thus saith the Lord, because we do need a word from God. Amen. Yes, indeed, we do. And so I invite you to share uh, this experience with others, uh, to invite someone into your experience with the word of God, encourage you to take advantage of the notes that you can study and then they will lead you to other resources that might enhance your understanding of the word that we don't have time to unload and unpack uh, during the social media presentation. And so uh, I ask for your prayers as well uh, that God's word might uh, be uh, free and clear through the servant of God uh, but also that God might illumine our minds and open our hearts and then minister to our needs. This is not just about education. This is about how to live the Christian life in today's world, how to represent Christ in the kingdom, how to function as a believer in Christ, and how to follow God's plan and God's way. So uh, let us turn to the second uh, chapter now of the book of the Revelation, and we will read once again, uh, this first letter to the church in Ephesus. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lamp stands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. Uh, you have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lamp stand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the application of, of his word. Will you pray with me? Dear eternal God, our heavenly Father, may your word live in our hearts. May we have open hearts to hear you. May we be empowered by what thus saith the Lord, Lord. Teach us how to apply biblical truth to the living of these days. We commit all concern, all worry, all fretting, all fear to Thee, O Lord, and know that You've given us the power of faith, but also the power of love and good understanding. Have Thine own way is our prayer. In Christ's name we pray, and God's people said, Amen. And so here in this section, we, we want to take time through each one of these letters because there's really so much here for us to be uh, nourished by and to feed upon as we study the Word. And remember, we're not doing it just to get a vision of the last days or uh, to try to discover when Christ will return or so much of that. That's in God's hands. But, but, but how can we be empowered 
by the word of the Lord for this day and age in which we live. And so when we come to this uh, particular uh, uh, letter, we have learned that Christ uh, commends the Ephesian church for uh, being orthodox uh, believers, you know, for keeping to the teaching that has been handed on. Uh, but he also condemns the church for its lack of witness and exhorts the church to overcome um, this lack in order to inherit eternal life. And so, and so again, as uh, we focus upon these verses, and now I've added one more verse uh, from verse uh, 1 through 4 uh, for our, our lesson today. And uh, it has been noted that the indirect object uh, to the angel and the heiress imperative right uh, are reversed uh, in this particular uh, portion of the word. And with the imperative, within uh, there is a real emphasis uh, here that, that is underscored and it's not characteristic but it's used in the letter for, uh, for effect. And, and it's a, this is the case with all of the seven letters uh, in, in uh, in the collection and in the revelation and and so they come across as very forceful very pertinent uh, important messages that need to be heard and acted upon uh, for the for the people who are receiving these words of edification instruction and enlightenment and and the angel is both the guardian of the city in terms of Ephesus and the church there and uh, the angel also often represents the gathered believer or, or the corporate uh, identity of the church, the church of Ephesus, in the location, the region, the city uh, where it does, it does function. And it, this really is in keeping with uh, the first chapter, verses 1, one through 2, uh, the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw, that is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. And so this is coming as fresh news, important news uh, for the believing community, uh, some of whom are suffering for their faith and others who are trying to find their way through so they don't get swallowed up in the world and the environment around them but rather learn to trust in God and stand on on God's word and and so as with the apocalypse uh, theme it, it, it's this letter is sent from God through Christ to the angel and then to John in the churches and and, and so the angel then in the concept of the angel uh, which has often been referred to as the pastor of the church, the spiritual director or leader of the church, and um, there is debate around that, but nonetheless the issue is, is that that's where the notion of messenger is attached, and so the angel is the messenger, and, and the one who functions as spiritual leader uh, for the church of Ephesus. And often we see in the scripture, in the New Testament, other places where the whole uh, sense of uh, the angelic present represents authority and uh, messages being sent and shared. Now you can follow that through in 1 Corinthians 11.10 and 1 Corinthians 4.9, Hebrews 13.2 and 1 Peter um, chapter 1 verse 12. And, and so the angel then has a sense of authority. And, and, and so it helps to remind us that uh, when you are called as a spiritual leader, director, a pastor, a minister uh, over uh, the people of God, that you come with a sense of authority that is related to the call of God upon your life and the call of God upon the whole church body. And, and, and it is a very sacred arrangement, uh, but also it's a very fragile arrangement because we as human beings don't always understand the importance of that, but also can abuse it or misuse it in a number of kinds of ways. Um, and so it's so important 
uh, to then be sensitive to the order that God has established in God's church. And the church belongs to the Lord as we will see uh, as we continue with our lesson. And, and, and so that's the order. So the angel represents messenger, represents witness, represents uh, overseer. Um, according to the plan of God and how God's plan is working out um, uh, uh, amongst God's people. And, and every now and then we get so caught up in calendars and in programs in the life of the church and in what we want the church to do and be about that sometimes we lose, lose focus of the fact that the church belongs to the Lord, number one, but also the church has a function uh, in the world that is very specific in the plan of God more than human beings that want to then uh, utilize the church and you have people all the time coming to use the church and this is true of all churches that are organized uh, throughout uh, our country and around the world and there's always someone with an agenda who comes along and they want to utilize the name of the church or uh, the status of the church or the presence of the church or the history of the church or even the influence and power of the church uh, in society in order uh, to support their particular agenda. And, and, and so you see that played out also in the epistles um, in the New Testament where there's always a reminder of the foundational truths about the church but also that those who will infiltrate, those who uh, will mix uh, truth and error, those who try to lead the church in a certain particular uh, direction for their own purposes and that can happen and it can come from anybody who uh, who is uh, in a natural position of leadership or fellowship, uh, but it, it, it can come because, um, because people are carnal and people want what they desire and sometimes those people can be in leadership and sometimes they can be in fellowship. But, but either way, uh, there's a red flag to that um, that we see in other parts of Scripture, but particularly here as this particular church is addressed in, as they, uh, the plan of God is being worked out among God's people. And, and, and so the message comes also with the idea of the eschaton in place. And we remember that that is uh, like the final act of God in his plan of salvation, uh, according to the revelation of St. John, that God has a plan and it's being acted out. And, and there is a notion of an eschaton, or a last movement of God, or what God is going to do uh, with the planet, or the universe, or of the human family as we move forward um, and, and so so it comes with seriousness and it comes with urgency and and it comes also with the message that um, there's a reminder that God is at work um, amongst you and, and the Lord is moving in a mighty way and and so we see also with the presence of the angels and with the Word of God which is a living word and with the testimony uh, that, that, that we see that it comes as a reminder uh, because we can get so caught up in doing what we've done before and doing what we think we ought to be doing and doing what has become custom or comfort zone uh, that then we uh, forget about what God is doing by God's power and the presence uh, in a dynamic way and a critical way, a creative way uh, right now in the life of the church uh, in history. A reminder that there are divine forces that are at work, but not only at work, but also watching. Um, you know, we live in a society now where now you watched all the time, and every now and then you have to be reminded of that because we forget, you know, everything we send out, everything we take, um, have access to uh, with social media or technology or in the digital world or any of that you know that there's a, a sense of surveillance with that if you go shopping and you get out of your car and go into a business with there there's cameras that are watching you as you move around shopping cameras are on you uh, you're being tracked your footprint is everywhere as well as mine and sometimes we, we forget that um, but it's also helpful to remember that and what you put in writing, what you say, um, and how you say it, and when you're in the public eye uh, and you have an image and then uh, you then speak or you then say something. 
then there are people around then uh, who will uh, respond to that that you've forgotten that they are even there when you're just sharing your thoughts or, or being yourself. And, and, and someone has noted that there are four functions of the whole notion of, of angel uh, in the seven letters and one would be uh, the idea of a corporate identity between the angel and the church. And, and, and so that means the church has a name, the church of Ephesus. Um, and then of the church of Ephesus, there is a leader, a spiritual guide, or a pastor, a messenger uh, over the church as well. And then, um, and then also, secondly, uh, that each church has a distinct, it serves as a distinct unit. Uh, made up of its own unique parts. Uh, churches have their own history, their own heritage. And, uh, and so that then is the reason there are separate letters for separate churches because uh, each angel has a uniqueness and each church has a uniqueness. And while there is a sense in which you know, all of the letters go to all of the churches that have ever existed in the name of Jesus Christ, in another sense, God, because God is concerned about our particular journey, is speaking specifically to certain churches in history and in time uh, in order to get a message across uh, to them. So, so we know that each uh, church then has a distinct unit uh, made up of its own unique parts, and so separate letters were needed for each angel behind them. And then third, that the presence of the angel stresses um, that each church then exists as, as a spiritual entity, uh, a, a militant presence of God in the world, if you will, um, that has the recognition of a place where the kingdom of God uh, is identified and, and resides. And so it, it's, it's figurative in a sense, but, but it's this living sense of Christ uh, being in the midst and, and that particular ministry representing who the risen Christ is and that also that that ministry is under the guidance and the protection of Jesus Christ and then fourth that that uh, they are servants of God carrying out God's orders uh, to uh, reform challenge and help these churches that is the angels so again fourth that the angels messengers witnesses are servants of God uh, carrying out God's orders about reformation, transformation, challenge, change, but also to empower the church and to help the church as the church seeks to then live according to God's will. And how we need to realize that God has armor bearers and angelic forces, but mainly the power of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and in our lives in order to uh, make us distinctive in terms of our witness for Christ where we are. And, and that being said, you don't have to try to be anyone other than who you are. And so if God has planted you or appointed you into the vineyard in a certain place, in a certain city, a certain region, a certain part of the country, a part of the world, with a certain group of people, then you have to really embrace that for what that means and appreciate that for what it means. And, and often people who are appointed will then come in with their own uh, sense of who the church should be and not appreciating the church's history or the church's um, location. Uh, but, but all of that needs to be taken into consideration. And then we believe as the ministry of the word goes forth that God has a word for that group of people uniquely their own because of who they are to empower them where they are and not so much to be concerned about what other ministries are doing or what other churches are doing, but rather to be in the midst of what God is doing in their location and with them. And that's not an easy, it's easy to say that than to really do that because it takes a sense of learning to walk with the Holy Spirit and surrender to the will of God and understand what God is saying. It's easy to see what other Christians are doing and just say, well, let's just copy them. It's easy to go online and then view all other ministries and say, well, I'll just copy that one and I'll do that. But what is God saying to you? What's the message of where you live, who you are? Uh, you distinctly as a personality, as an individual, Phillips Brooks, in teaching uh, students of, 
of preaching said that, that the Word of God, preaching is allowing the Word of God to come through your personality. So even as a preacher, you don't have to mock other preachers or you don't have to sound just like anyone else. Why don't you just be yourself and know that God's Word validates your ministry for you just being who you are and speaking and preaching and teaching and then uh, reaching others. And that would take a great burden off your shoulder, but also would help you to be authentic, transparent, and a person that's filled with integrity because you're just being who you are. Now, regardless of how many other ways God manifests His Word through all the diversity of human personality and different people and different ages and different generations, then the Lord would say to the church of Ephesus, as the Lord would say to you and me, be yourself. Uh, let me use you because I created you uniquely. And this particular location for ministry is unique like none other. And so let's appreciate that. Let's see what God's word is for us. And let us hear that and then follow that by the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And so, and so the Ephesian church then was proud of its position. Uh, not only as the uh, metropolis of Asia as it has been called. Uh, but also its heritage, and it's the mother church of the region. And therefore it's natural uh, for the first church to be addressed, and, and not only because of its uh, location and status and history, but because if it, if it comes through Ephesus because of where they're located, then it's easily transferable to all the other locations uh, for, for the Word of God. Well, we're going to finish with that with the next lesson, but with our divine reading for, for today, I uh, would like for you to reflect on uh, these questions from the lesson. Uh, what do you think Christ's message is to the church today? What do you think Christ's message is to the church today? What do you think our Lord is saying to our world? What do you think God is saying to the world? What do you think Christ, the risen Christ, the victorious Jesus is saying to the world, the nation, the state, the city? What message would you like to send to the church of the 21st century? If you were in a position to send a message, what would that be? Your church, your city, your nation, and even the world. And so one prayer uh, that I offer, and then you can add your own prayer, is dear Lord Jesus thank you for your words of truth and justice dear Lord for the power of your message to me first and all the world around me thank you dear Lord for your redeeming love amen and then one way to apply that is for me to search my own heart to see if I have sincerely heard the message of the risen Christ and determine if I am truly hearing the Word of God. And then you can then reflect in your own way, you can pray in your own way, and then you can act in your own way. And God will bless us. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for your Word. Thank you for your people. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Somebody needs a healing Word today. Somebody needs a miracle today. Someone needs guidance. Someone needs light in the midst of their darkness. Someone needs reassurance in your promises. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. And we commit them to you. We commit ourselves to you. And we simply say, Lord, have thine own way. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I'm delighted to take this time with you 
members of First Baptist Church to highlight announcements, encourage you uh, to secure the bulletin, contact the office anytime Tuesday through Thursday from 9 to 1 for a hard copy uh, or a hard copy that you can then give to someone else who doesn't have access uh, uh, to the internet. And so we want to simply share with you upcoming events and also to remember those who have had special occasions uh, and celebrations in their lives, but also uh, to offer prayers for those who stand in need. And so we did want to indicate that another food, another food distribution uh, will take place on August the 27th, 2021 at the Southeast Raleigh Table Church located 1950 New Bern Avenue. And it starts at 11 a.m. giving out food and it ends at 2 o'clock p.m. and is sponsored by First Baptist Church on Wilmington Street. And certainly we want you to get that message out. Their families are still struggling and uh, many are being helped and doing better and others are still uh, in need and some are even doing worse. And so we try uh, to do what we can to be with those in our mission outreach and efforts through our missionary circle and the combined missionary movement of First Baptist Church certainly want you to be blessed by that, and particularly those others that you may know who really need uh, groceries or food, uh, food distribution uh, blessing. And uh, also we again want to uh, celebrate with those who list continues to grow of those who have been born in August <coughs> and have celebrated birthdays, and so we want to read those names. Uh, once again today, uh, Sister Velma Gay on August 4th, Sister Lucille P. Lee on August 5th, Sister Dolores King on August 5th, Deaconess Orr Mae Jones on August 5th, Shanice Lauren Mark on August 7th, Chase Norwood August 9th, Eugene Weldon. August 12th, Margaret Lane, August 14th, Hattie Beckwith, August 16th, Trustee Delphine Bullock, August 18th, Lauren Zengrath, August 19th, Doris Spencer, August 22nd, James Richardson, August 23rd, Deacon Bobby Artis, August 26th. Jacqueline Jones, August 26th. And Deacon Gordon Johnson, August 29th. Kenneth Walker, August 30th. And Deaconess Beulah C. Newman, August 31st. Once again, we congratulate those who also celebrate their anniversaries for the month of August. Kevin and Shanice Mark, August 4th, Dr. Ulysses and Sister Margaret Lane, August 14th. They are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary of the family and loved ones, and we are grateful. <clears throat> At this time, we, um, we read a scripture as we remember in prayer, prayer requests, but also uh, our sick and our shut in. We turn to the book of James, the fifth chapter, verses 13. It says, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Amen. And so we remember uh, these Prayer requests are sick and shut in, Ozella Burgess, Tyler Day, Pearl Fowler, Doris Bridges Harris, 
Dorothy Jones, Alan Powell, Marie, Mary Louise Salton, Margaret Wilson. We pray for the family of Mary Dudley Archridge, her son Charles in particular. We pray for Sister Cheryl Caldwell, Deacon Randolph Baysmore, Brother Rover Harris. We pray for Sister Carter Gill. And we pray for Anthony, Jonathan, Carolyn. We pray for the family and friends of Danny Humphrey. We pray for Deaconess Jacqueline Ward. We pray for Sister Minnie Moore. We pray for the Carol Lawrence family and the Dottie Johnson family. We pray for Reverend Royals as he makes his way in mission. He is in Kenya. We pray for Gloria. We pray for Nina Thomas. And we pray for the police of Chief Patterson of Raleigh. And we pray for our society at large and the needs in our country and in our world. Will you join me in remembering these prayer requests? And if you have prayer requests, please get those to us and we'll be happy to pray, but also to share that request with others if it is your desire. Let us pray. Dearly Father, we thank you and we praise you, first of all, for your word and your presence and the promise that prayer is powerful, that you use prayer to work miracles, to comfort the lost, to heal the sick, even to raise the dead. And Lord, we thank you that our prayers have been answered before and we believe that you're answering now and we believe you'll answer them again according to your will and according to your purpose. And so we lift up each of these names and families and concerns and those who are really concerned for them. And we pray that you would just bless them in a mighty way and encourage their hearts as only you can, O Lord. And may they know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are able to break through, you are able to move in a mighty way. And Lord, we just want to add to the prayer also Pastor Isaac Zulu of Zambia who sent out a prayer request for us because of the general elections in that country and uh, people have been killed due to the political violence and we thank of their precious ministry and what they are doing. And we pray the truth will emerge for that nation, Lord, and we pray that you would bless your disciples who were there, the people of faith, and, and pastors uh, like Isaac and, and Rose Zulu, that you would preserve them, protect them, and use them in a mighty way as they proclaim the truth of your gospel and minister to the needs of their congregants, that they will know that underneath are your everlasting arms, and that you're with them, and that you're greater is he that is in us, and he that is in the world. And so we offer these prayer requests, Lord, and pray that you would intervene, that you would bless. You are the great physician. You are the work of miracles. You are the great shepherd of comforts. So we say, Lord, have thine own way and move in a mighty way. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory. In Christ's precious name we pray. Amen.